mics up. Mobile BI uh, presentation. I'm not just going to be my stuff, we're going to talk about other products as well. There'll be a session at the start to do with mobile BI while we're doing it, what you're looking to get out of it. Um, we can show you some products from Microsoft, take you through the business intelligence end to end. We're going to do some SQL Server analysis services, tablet model, multi dimensional. Then we'll move into the Excel with Power Pivot, Power View, Power Query, Power Map, and then look at the Office 365 with the Q&A and presentation through there. As Sam has said, these sessions will be recorded and you'll be given a link to uh, view them later. We have got a web address for any queries you might have uh, later on, which is techweek at qa.com. If you include my name, Mark Fitzgerald, and the session, which is the mobile BI, we'll be able to direct the queries to the correct instructor and we'll get back to you on that. If you've got any technical queries during the presentation, anything that uh, you can't hear or whatever, you get in touch with uh, Sam during or via chat and she'll uh, fix or try to uh, get you uh, up and running again. If time permitting, we will open the call for questions. Uh, if you have any questions during the presentation, uh, send them through to QA Tech Week and those will be passed on to me uh, as we go along. Depends on what the questions are, whether we do them during the session or uh, at the end. Okay. So moving into the presentation itself, we're here to talk about the mobile BI. So it's mobile business intelligence. We're going to look at what it is, what most people think it is, and what you're going to get out of it. Then we'll look at some definitions, the history, uh, progress that's been made. Then we'll talk about the choices you've got. Planning for mobile BI and then the application choices will allow us to see individual items such as the Microsoft BI. Then maybe uh, look at some click view as well. But uh, let's see how it uh, goes for time. So to start with, we've got the definitions of mobile and business intelligence. The mobile with the computing, it's uh, as it's gone on the screen, taking the computer and all the necessary files and software out, out into the field. When you get the Microsoft or with mobile BI, you're looking at both the data and the presentation layer. You might have some processing as well to go between the two. It depends on what you want to do with the product, with your uh, users how much you want to rely on the data going with them, or how much you want it centralized on the servers. So it may be internet or internet, and you may have to rely on the comms connection for some of the data items. As far as business intelligence goes, set of theories, methodologies, architectures, and technologies to get meaningful data out of the raw data that's held within your system. What methods and what processes you go through, cleanse, get the data out so that you can present it in a reasonable format to your end users will depend on what data you're going to start with, what processes you're going to go through, and who you're delivering it to. Different organizations have different requirements at different levels. So your chief executive might need less data but it might be targeted more at only giving them the data they need to see so they don't get swamped. Someone lower down the organizational structure might need to have more data, might want to produce their own queries and get their own outputs and their own uh, information. They might uh, use products like Excel, reporting services, uh, Make SQL management studio if you look in the Microsoft site. Uh, the mobile side, we've got uh, pictures up on the web. Some people will only look at the tablet 
and the smartphones will look in the mobile device. For some individuals, the laptop is uh, the first item to go to. It's going to be larger than the rest, but you can take more information with you. So if you're looking at a full-blown information worker who's producing their own information from raw data, they may use products like Power Pivot to import the data within Excel and use Power View, Power Pivot, Pivot Tables, Power Maps, whatever to get the information out. We'll be seeing those uh, later on in the session as uh, demos. With the tablets, they will have uh, less information pushed down to them. They may be only a portal or a, a way of viewing the information on a remote site. You can push the data down onto those um, tablets as well. It's uh, really up to yourselves. When you're producing the front end, whether you want to use core front end from uh, some of the vendors or whether you want to produce your own, it's uh, again your choice. As soon as you get down to your smartphone, you've got very limited space to use, so you've got to target the information more. Some individuals, you might see them on the train, they're carrying around folders, they're carrying around uh, PDFs, Word documents, Excel documents that have been printed out. They find it easier to analyze the data just viewing it as a printed page. You'll see them uh, highlighting information, scribbling notes, the like going through. So they, when they get to work, they'll be able to use it. Now, some people like that, others don't. Depends on your requirement and, and your end users requirement. When you're looking at targeting levels, you've got three main areas that uh, companies go for. You've got the enterprise level, which tends to be an IT department putting it together. They'll have the, all of the tools from SQL Server, we're talking about Microsoft here, SQL Server, analysis services in its tabular models and multi-dimensional. Those will be then viewed through the Excel reporting services, your SharePoint, performance point, whatever you're looking for. So it's an IT department producing it to a specific location. So that is going to the departmental level. So this would be someone who's not part of the IT team creating it, or it could be the IT team creating it for a single department rather than the whole enterprise. It will be targeted information, not using all the information from the organization, but just maybe sales, production, going through and analyzing the data for themselves. We've then got individuals. These are the power users who love using Excel. They want to get the data into Excel, manipulate it, get the information out, and show it uh, and analyze it for themselves. They may share it with a select number of others, maybe through um, something like uh, Network Drive, where the others will have the same application. They could be just the ones who print it out for their bosses um, to then use. Another factor uh, that you've got to think about when you're looking at producing the information on the business intelligence is who's going to view it. If it's internal, maybe to the management and the staff, it's still got to be correct. It's still got to be to a, a certain standard, but it may not be having to go through as regular, rigorous a check as for external users. With the management, you're looking at very targeted information. You won't give them too much to use or too much to view. They want just the information to make the decision. With staff members, they will have more general information. They may have more information to work with to do their own analysis with RPU. If you're looking at external agencies who want to view the data, then you've got to look at the security side, who's available, who's able to see it, what information they can see, making sure they don't see uh, 
other users' information. So a lot of security, uh, even more when it's doing the external. They would tend to be through some kind of portals rather than allowing them to download and manipulate the data for themselves. You may have a requirement for individuals to get onto the data and start to analyze it for themselves as well. So this is where you're looking at people um, maybe analyzing the Facebook um, type information or Twitter information to find out about what's happening with the organization, what's happening with their own information. So you're looking at the, the trending type of data. So issues you may come up against when you're looking at the mobile BI. So first one is if you've got the connected type of BI where you're not putting the data down onto the mobile uh, device itself, you would need to have it connected. So it needs to be, have access to the data at any time and it's reliant upon the communications link. Now, for myself, uh, use the train quite a bit. There's uh, certain black spots you can go to. You don't get the information. You don't, don't get the link through. You might have perfect links, um, maybe within London, but other places you can't rely on them. So you may have an issue doing that. So not available at all times. You might also have to look at refreshing the data on the server. If you refresh the data, how often is it going to refresh and what's going to be the knock-on effect to the end users accessing that data. So if you are looking at a refresh every 10 minutes, 15 minutes, so you don't get stale data coming through, you've got to have a knock-on effect then of maybe taking the application out or having to work around having two versions of the data, one live and then switch it over between the two. There's a, you might also look at the security of your server. So only certain people are allowed to see the information going through. There's data residing on the application uh, in disconnected mode. You've got information coming through. You must make sure it has a, a, the, uh, some kind of um, information about when the data was last updated. So we had a couple of issues with organizations before where they've been making decisions on data that's been out of date and stale because there was nothing on the downloaded or disconnected mobile app, uh, appliance to tell them when it was downloaded. If you're looking at security and mobile, you've got to uh, worry even more than in disconnected mode for things like your iPad, your phone, if they get stolen, make sure they're locked, make sure that the information cannot get into it. There's been some items on the web about uh, taking uh, mobile app, mo mobiles down to a certain um, temperature um, to be able to break into them that way. Not seen it myself, but uh, that sort of thing. So security is paramount on there. If you're looking at business intelligence with a disconnected mode, there is a lot of information that you will have to put down into the disconnected mode to make it available to the end users to make decent decisions. That is the, exactly the information that uh, other organizations and uh, individuals want to grab hold of. You also look at the storage and processing requirements in disconnected mode, especially if you've got uh, the smartphones coming through, iPads and the like. If you're looking at the mobile being uh, a laptop, you've got more space to put uh, information into. So what we're trying to do with the BI is get the right information to right people at the right time in the right format makes it even uh, clearer all of these messages when you're looking at business intelligence on mobile. The, the right information, people want the mobile appliance so they can make decisions there and then rather than having to wait until they go back to the office or having to dial in for information from someone else. So making sure the correct information is available rather than the wrong information and 
also make it uh, so that you might have incomplete data but notify the users incomplete if they need the data now. If they wanted to have complete information, they may have to wait uh, for the next refresh or whatever we need. So we're looking at things like data quality services, master data services, SQL Server and integration services with it uh, checking and validation on the way through to get the right information into the system. The right people making sure it's secure so only certain people can access it and making it available. So if you've got a technology that only certain people can access, not because of security, but because of the knowledge and skills to be able to do it, then that is a limiting factor. As we've gone on the slide there, does every need, one need access to data or is security a priority? And if the report is accessible to John because he has the skills or the security, does Frank need to have it? Frank being uh, maybe the manager or maybe a, a colleague. At the right time, the data needs to get the data. The IT team may not have the um, the time to do it. They may not have the data available at the time that the user requires it. Especially if you've got large systems being passed through to things like integration services, going through um, items like that. The right format. We've had this in the past where people have got it from external agencies, whether they've been passing information like a Word document, a PDF. They now need to manipulate it with other data from Excel. So it's not in the right format. It will take time to do the migration and the validation work being or after being migrated. We've then got a common issue where people will ask for it in a certain format like a CSV or an Excel. I put it there um, knowing some of the colleagues uh, we've worked with in the past, they want it in those kind of formats because they want to change it rather than they're going to work on it afterwards. They want to manipulate the data maybe to make themselves look a bit better. So on the Microsoft SQL Server side, um, you've got a couple of tools the data quality services and non data management to allow you to have a better understanding of the data that's coming through and validation of that data. Once we've got the, the validated data into the system, then we can now work on it to have the business intelligence system through. The data quality services will allow you to do the cleansing and matching the master data services will allow you to have a centralized version of core master data, such as product information, customer information, something like that, rather than transaction data. Once you've got the cleansed data moving through, it's uh, usual to put it into a storage area. So whether you want to use a data warehouse, data warehouse, or a data vault, um, really up to you, different uh, techniques to store the data and make it available to your end users and your other systems. As far as the display elements go, there's uh, some core elements that uh, most people will use. So we've got a report and that report will be maybe holding the tables, matrices and lists. We can also have charts. We've also so, so we've got that, that as an example here. It's going to be a table going through. We've also got scorecard. The scorecard will tend to have some kind of actual target, some kind of comparison to give you a success, failure, or a warning going through. On this display, I've decided to show the failures as red crosses. I've got a yellow triangle for warnings. Uh, I was a bit mean. I didn't reward anyone with a green for actually doing what they're supposed to do. Um, but it allows you to highlight those that are failing rather than those uh, being swamped with those that succeeded. 
We can also put in spark lines. We've got an example here for spark lines in the systems availability. Allows you to see what it's done over a period of time. Now, if you're looking at KPIs with trends in the past, the trend will only show you a comparison to the previous version or previous value. That previous value may not be representative about how it's used or gone through in the past. So it may be in a very low figure or very high figure in the past. Now on the trend lines here, we've got a spark line. You can see the network did a dip and then back up. There was a data warehouse uh, being level all the way through and then had a blip upwards and then down again. Uh, again, highlighted the ones that are failing or the ones we've got to really think about. So the data warehouse in this version, it's got a lowest value, it's only got 90% availability, so we're making that available to um, the users. It's an unacceptable figure, so it should be highlighted uh, as well. So. Data bars are usually the bar chart type, or it could be a line chart, which happen to sit within the table itself rather than a chart or as a separate entity. The indicators, as we've got here, are the KPI values, um, sometimes got a rag setting, red and the green, that others can use. I have a demonstration on this page of the gauges and dials, or the dials especially. The gauges, I've used the Microsoft uh, reporting services gauges here. So we've got a gauge as a thermometer type with the lines going through. We've also got a gauge with the bar type. So we've got three versions of the gauges there going through. So we've now got uh, filters and slices. So users want to interact, be able to filter the information off. One of the ways you can do it is a filter, which uh, takes up less space. When you click down, it will then show you the other choices. Some users want to see what, what choices they had before they click it. So they want a presentation of the four or five different choices, then they choose the, the one option. You might also have multi-select slices and filters going through. If we produce those items, the reports, scorecards, filters and slices, as individual units, we can then add them together to make something like a dashboard. Now that can either be done through products like uh, report, reporting services or the uh, performance point, which is part of the SharePoint 2010-2013 product. If you're going to use the performance point, you can change the values or change the um, reports in and out. There's a restriction on the reporting services. It won't allow you to dynamically change the report content, the sub-report content. So as soon as you've chosen the report, it will then do it. Whether you have a hide and show within that sub-report to show individual items, it's really your choice. Once we've got so we've got a certain amount of detail we need to push out to people with the BI. We now want to think about how are we going to get it to them. Now we talked about the disconnected and connected. If it's disconnected, one of the items you might think about doing is something like an email. So an email with an attachment showing the information. That would could be a report from reporting services. Could be an Excel spreadsheet or power pivot going through. Now one of the limitations you'll have with quite a few uh, internal and external email systems is the size of the attachment. So with a very large power pivot, you probably won't be able to do that. So you're down to maybe more static type report going out with very little interactivity once it uh, gets to the end user. With a portal, it will allow them to get information coming through on a web page normally. So you connect into something like SharePoint that will allow them to see all of the information they want within the system. You can use security to decide which parts of the portal they can get to. It also allows them to interact and share documents with the rest of the organization. 
maybe not just BI, but they can do uh, uh, Word, Excel, Power Pivot, whatever tables, um, PowerPoint, maybe PDFs, and like going through. It will also allow you to have the workflow at kind of applications coming through. So you might have some kind of prioritization or authorization before data is released. So that's that. Next up is a web application. It doesn't have to be a portal, maybe just a website that you go to to interact with the information. So with if you're looking at something like reporting services in standby or standalone um, mode rather than SharePoint integrated mode, that could be an application that you get to to get the information through the system. So the web application is uh, one option. Now that could be a pre-built vendor application or it could be a self-build application using Java.net or whatever you want to look at. Next up is your device specific application. So if you wanted to use something like your Android or your iOS, you can produce device specific applications using those um, platforms. That may limit you in the future to only that platform unless you redesign the application. Lots of organizations want the same look and feel over lots of different browsers and platforms. So whether you're using the Android, the iOS, or a Windows application, maybe they want the same look and feel. Next up is the self-build, self-service type application. If you are doing the email, the portals, then it tends not to allow you to do the self-build, self-service. It would take more application power than on those uh, items. So they tend to be built as a front end, then using things like the filters and the slices to allow you to get the information. Products like PowerView allow you to do the, the self-build, self-service depend upon the information you've got stored on the server or within the power pivot if you're looking at the Excel version. So self-build, self-service is more uh, requirement um, coming out for that, but you would have to look at your specific uh, applications going through. The canned reports are where you've got the pre-produced stored report design where the data is being read all the time from the information. And that's the back end information being SQL Server in our case or analysis services in Tableau or multi-dimensional mode. If you're looking at the Excel route with Power Pivot, Power View, uh, Power Map and Power Query, the canned reports tend to be the items which are on your worksheet in the pivot tables when you're limiting the end users to only changing your slices or filter content. Okay. Next up is the delivery time scale. So how quickly do the end users want to get the information through? Do you want it to be reactive or proactive? So the reactive would be some data has changed, so the information needs to be pushed out to certain individuals. Now that will tend to be some kind of alert coming through to a certain condition being met. So the stock level on a certain product going below a level, or it will be some stock price has gone above a certain value. Now as soon as you starting to do this reactive, it would tend to be that you're only sending out very limited information as part of the message. So you're looking at maybe not going down the attachment route, you're doing um, the body of an email being a value. Now if you're using self-build applications, 
you may have some kind of communication to push the message down to an application on a mobile. The proactive is going to be some kind of timing. So you're trying to get the information out going through um, the information there. So you're looking at a an hourly feed, maybe a daily feed being pushed out going through the information. The immediate and triggered, this is again to do with the alert, whether you want some information being delayed for a certain period. So it's targeted updates or alerts being sent out on a 10 minute hourly basis rather than as soon as it occurs. You might also want to produce some kind of uh, throttling technique so that if the event occurs and then reoccurs within a certain time frame, maybe a couple of minutes, you won't then resend it because the person at the other end hasn't had time to react to the first message coming through. So just waiting and for the um, delivery. Then we've got the planned and timed. So it may be every um, X minutes or hours or days. If the existing BI could be delivered through that route, you don't have to then look at uh, producing anything else. You can just email or automate the export of to Excel or Word or wherever we're looking for. If you're doing the planned and timed, you will then have static or table-based parameters rather than ad hoc or user-based parameters coming through. They send out different content to different people depending upon their requirements. Now, when you're looking at producing the information or producing the application, we can either do self-build or, or we can do the vendor product. So let's deal with the self-build first because we're going to go on to the Microsoft uh, applications in a bit. So the first one is you might want the web-based applications, whether it's in Java, .NET, or HTML5. Microsoft have still got uh, Silverlight um, hanging around on some of their applications, like the Power um, View within the web browser. We use the, the Silverlight uh, application. If you're going to use those, they are then transferable onto the different platforms, usually. There are some information or some problems with uh, how much support each of the browser types gives to these and each of the mobile devices gives to those. So if you're looking at something like PowerView going through uh, an iPad, you'll see a message coming up the top saying, or oh, maybe saying, that it's not fully supported, but give it a go anyway. If you look at that, uh, there are some issues with the mapping and filters with the slicers. If you click on a slicer, maybe it won't uh, refresh for you. That day over the last few days on some demonstrations and stuff. If you're looking at platform specific applications rather than web browser based, then you normally target in at a particular platform. If you're using reusable sections in the background, uh, you're building the components as you go through then you can reuse most of the information. The front end may be different than some of the app sort of devices you are targeting. In. So the iOS, the Android, and the other. Now, if you're looking at the advantages and disadvantages of self-build, the first one you've got is um, it's a lot easier to tailor your own self-build application to be specific and make it transferable to your application. So as long as your end users produce some kind of uh, good outline about what they require, then it's a lot easier to do that through the, the self field than it would be through something like Microsoft or Cookie, um Tableau, something like that. On the downside, the development time would be uh, a little bit longer for the application. It may be that you can get a vendor 
application in and get maybe 80% of what you need in a smaller time frame than it would be to self-build it. There are some developers who can get the information and get the application out um, very quickly, but that's not always the case. On the other side, it really depends on what you're clustering in here. If you're using open source and getting information through your own web servers, you have those already, then it's going to be a lower cost. You're going to do development in there, though, if you wanted to. Next up would be the self uh, the, the product. So these are vendor led products. People like Microsoft, IBM with Cognos, Tableau, the Oracle side, all the different vendors. If you pick the off the shelf applications, most of them cover nearly everything you need. They will have different techniques of how you produce the BI. They will have different uh, requirements for getting the data into the BI application. There are large vendors or smaller niche vendors. The niche vendors may be uh, exactly what you want if you need a specific uh, tailoring done for your application. There are some vendors and, uh, who will pick on specific business areas as well. There are some that are very good at the sales side, there's some that are very good at the banking and insurance side. So you might have to look around different vendors for what you need out of your BI application. Using the same criteria as the previous slide, it's going to be more difficult to tailor and get the specific output you need through some of the applications. It would be better for uh, making it transferable if you use one of the bigger vendors because they have tailored for the different front ends already. So if you produce the application or output, it should be able to be used on multiple applications and, uh, and the uh, multiple platforms as well. Development time will tend to be lower, but you will not get exactly what you need out of it. So there's a trade-off between the development and the specific items. Time to develop and deploy the initial reports would tend to be lower, but again, you may not get what you want. Cost-wise, maybe a downside for your uh, applications if you need to go to something like SQL Server, Business Intelligence, or Enterprise License with the SharePoint maybe enterprise license again, get everything you go through, you're going to get into very costly. Same with Oracle, same with Cosmos going through. To get the most out of it, you will have to pay the money. So sometimes it's, you may be uh, looking at developing it for yourself rather than going through and uh, using a vendor application. As far as the Microsoft products, I've got the uh, the list of products that uh, we are looking at at the Microsoft BI. So we've got the Microsoft SQL Server uh, with its associated application. We've got SQL Server integration services, SQL Server analysis services. Remember, there's three flavors of that when you get to SQL 2012, 2014. We've got tabular model, multi-dimensional, and SharePoint integrated, which is behind the power pivot. We've got the SQL Server reporting services which allows us to have SharePoint integrated or standalone models to feed the data through, and that can then be exported uh, wherever we need. We've got master data services and data quality services. The Microsoft Analytics Platform System, APS, that was renamed from the Parallel Data Warehouse last week. It now has the ability to have Hadoop and big data included within the parallel event warehouse to make it the application platform system. If we're trying to uh, lessen the cost for getting the data out to the various applications, one of the ways that you might think about doing it is the Office 365 with the SharePoint 2010-2013 uh, being hosted by 
Microsoft in Azure. That way, you don't have to have your internal on-premises applications are web viewable. You would then have the data you wouldn't uh, you would like your end users to see as part of maybe a power pivot on the Office 365. With the Microsoft front end, we're looking at the Power BI. So we've got Power Pivot, Power Map, Power View, Power Query, and Q&A. We'll see all of those in demonstrations in a short while. On the other side of the slide here, we've got the Microsoft, uh, sorry, the Gartner uh, Magic Quadrant for Business Attentives and Analytics. See the Microsoft are uh, one of the leaders coming through. As far as the ability to execute, then Click and Tableau are deemed to be um, higher up the chart. If you're looking at the completeness of vision, then IBM, Cognos, and SAS are deemed to be there. So Microsoft are sort of third either way you're looking at it. We've got uh, a couple of diagrams. The first one is the on-premises BI infrastructure. So we're looking at source data being brought through into the SQL Server data warehouse, whether that's a SQL Server using enterprise license or the APS system. We've then got analysis services in two models there, the multi-dimensional tableau, the tabula, and the data being fed from the data warehouse into those. It can be that you use the source data directly into the tabular model as well. That's using the X-Velocity format of data. At the bottom of the item there, um, highlighted in red, is your Excel. Um, you're going to use uh, Excel 2013. That allows us to have the power pivot, power view, and power query in that product. That can be passed through into Power Pivot for SharePoint for others to use, and that uses the Excel services and Excel web app to allow the end user to see it. We can also use Power View off of the Power Pivot. Another product which doesn't get uh, much exposure is the Performance Point. It's quite a, an old product. Uh, started in 2007, Microsoft included it within the SharePoint 2010 Enterprise Edition. The advantage you've got on the performance point that the uh, reporting services, Power View and the like, don't have is it allows you to dynamically change the content of the web part in SharePoint. So depending upon what people have clicked, you can then dynamically change the chart, the table uh, on another part of the same um, dashboard. Reporting services, we've got in SharePoint integrated models there. You can have it in standalone model as well. The three uh, items, the tables, um, laptops, tablets, laptops, and smartphones can all link into the product and are viewable going through. The second diagram is the Microsoft Cloud. I haven't included the SQL Azure on here, or SQL Azure um, VMs. Uh, with looking at data within your on-premises now being produced and pushed up to the Office 365, either through taking a power pivot and publishing that, or taking the data management gateway to allow the synchronization of the data within the power pivot and the data sources out to either on after services or SQL Server in the back end. On those last two slides, we've got various sections shown in red. Those are going to be the target of the demonstration we're now going to uh, look at doing. So we're looking at taking a BI end-to-end -end sort of view of the data. We're looking at the reporting services, Power Query, Power Pivot, Power View, Power Map, and then I'll finish off with some Q&A at the end of this. And the Q&A product is on the Office 365 at the moment. It uh, may be put down to the on-premises later um, in the life cycle. So, 
to share my desktop. So hopefully you can see um, my desktop now. Looking at using the SQL Server Management Studio, this is show you what I've got here. On the analysis services, I've got a multi-dimensional and a tabular model. So we're looking at some databases going through here for the QA, NHS uh, example, and the BI end-to-end, uh, which is based upon the adventure work. We've got some databases available uh, to bring some information through as well. That will allow us to show the information to the end users. So we're going to take some of that data and show it uh, using the various products. So first off, looking at uh, reporting services. Now we can either use the Visual Studio. I'm using, um, as we've got here, Visual Studio uh, 2012 going through. We can create new projects from there. Or we could use the Report Builder product. So this Report Builder going through. So either one you want to use. The report builder allows you to do one application, one report at a time, targeted at the end user self service type uh, end of the spectrum. So very little um, training required to get the information out. You can, as IT department, help out the end users by using shared data sources, shared data sets, and report part. I'll show you some of those uh, a little bit later. So I'm going to go through as a report designer on the Visual Studio. So using Visual Studio, I've created a project, which is the Tech Week demo. I've created a shared data source and a shared data set. So just to uh, redo one of those, I'll show you one of those. I'm going to create a data source and point it out to my QA SQL database, from SQL Server, put the server name in, and then select the database I'm going to work on. I can set the credentials up. This is how the end user impersonated or um, used to authenticate with the SQL Server when they require the data. If you use the Windows authentication at the top, it will then imitate or impersonate the end user when they connect to the server. Click OK for that. That's now been saved as the QA SQL DB. What I might want to do is create a report directly off of that. I want to make this uh, available later on to an end user to use. I'm going to write a query for them. I'm going to create a new data set. Then base that upon the data source I've just created. I'm just going to create a products list off of that uh, query. We can go into Query Designer. So it makes it uh, quite nice and easy there. We can add it using uh, an access like view. We can add tables. So I want to do my dim product through here. And the data I want exposed to the end user. I want them to see the business key, product name, the category, color, size, style. That's right in the query for me. I could have written this directly. I want to check it out just to make sure I've got it, which works. We click OK, and that will be now stored as a query. But when we click OK, it'll be stored there, so we can now reuse that in any application we want. So let me now now do uh, a report. We're going to add a new report, new item. It's going to be a report. So we're going to use the wizard. So we put in that this is going to be a product in this demo. Click add. Once we've done that, we can go straight to the data set, add a data set based upon the shared data source which is our product list selected earlier. So as the report designer, don't have to write any query there. What I would like to do, though, is add a nice report. 
So I'm going to insert a table. This table will have originally the product business key, the name, the color, size, and style. I'm going to change the width of one of the columns to make it a little bit better. I'm going to then change the background color on here. So what I would like to do is just introduce the properties at the side, just so you see we can control most of the items uh, through these items here. Background color on the fill. I like a nice dark blue in the background, which means I want to change the text. So the font, the color will now change to a white, and then uh, we'll put bold on for that as well. So really up to you uh, what you need. So I'm going to make this as short as possible. So click a preview. So I'll run for the first time, get the information through. There we go. Now at that stage, we may want the end users to get involved with this. What I'm going to look at doing is some opening close, so hide and so also do a dynamic or user um, sorting on this. So click on the right click on the color, then go to text box properties on the interactive sort. I'm going to turn on interactive sorting and do that by color. Do the same for the style. I'll do the two. You can see it changing. So on the now preview, we get small arrowheads at the top, which allows us to sort it once it's been uh, run for the first time. If we look at the inter interactive open and close, what I might like to do is on the details, I'm going to add a group as a parent group based upon the subcategory to start with, with a header. And that will allow us to see the subcategory here. When we do a preview, we've got the subcategories with the product within it. Those will then be shown all the time. So there are some uh, uses, some users who want to close down so you just see the subcategory names and then will allow you to see um, some kind of summary header before you click a plus. So on here on the details, group property. Divide that second row at all times. I want to then toggle it based on the subcategory name. Now, when we preview it, it's closed down by default. We can open up any of these that we like going through. To put the summary in, we might want to click on something like uh, the product name here. We choose the product name again, it'll just show the product name. Now, what I probably want to do is to produce a count on here. So using a field, I tend to choose um, another field. So we do a count, so insert a summary. So we're going to do an expression. And we can look at the aggregations, and we've got count or count distinct. So on the count of the field product name, click on OK. I'll we'll do a preview. It will then tell us how many items are within what. And if we look at mounting bikes, there's 32. Look at bottom uh, brackets, there's three there. So we've got a, a static type of report which allows people to use it. Now it may be that you want some end users to be able to choose some colors. I'm just going to hard code a couple of parameters in here. So add a parameter and it's just put it as color. It's going to be a text field. I only want them to be a single value, so no multi values, don't allow no available values. Probably want to do this from a query if I was doing this for myself, but I'm just going to select a few set colors. 
that uh, we want. On the default, I'm going to set up a specific value. Go through. And then we can either change the data set if we were allowed to on here. We also got the data set properties where we can do filters, add a filter. We want the filter color to be equal to the parameter color value. When we next present it to the end user, they will see the black product. See there's a lot less options here. The mounted bikes has only got 16 items now. So if we choose red, and we've got no mountain bikes at all, we don't need the other products. Once we've got to this stage, we've got the RDL, the Report Definition Language document, on the project properties. That's now going to be sent to the report server. So if we now do a build and deploy, we're sending the information up to the report server. I'm going to use Internet Explorer for this. If I go to here in my Tech Week demo, now I've got my product list demo going through, and that's allowing us to see those on the web page. We can still use the options going through for the view report. If we're in SharePoint integrated mode, the parameters will be on the right hand side rather than across the top. There are options once we produce the report in here to export to, and those could be limited by the uh, a web document, a web config. There's also an option for printing and creating an atom feed or a data feed from the data set. The data sets are produced, the product list is there, and the data sources, there's my SQL DB. As an end user, so this was me using Visual Studio, using Report Builder, what I might like to do, this is the way an end user might do it, they can select it from here. They don't have to create the data set. All they need to do is be able to browse and then find within the tech demo data set. I produce one called product list. Click OK. That same data set is there. They don't have to write any queries as long as you've got the data set um, produced for them, they can then decide how they want to see it on the front end. So this user may want to do the inserting of a table exactly the same way as we did before. Just drag the fields in, make sure the fields are wide enough, and you can change those later on, and give the run, and it will rerun the report. So data source and data data set will save time. One of the options you might decide to use here is back in the Visual Studio, we've got the ability to go through on the report itself in design mode under report for publishing report parts. This can be done from within the report builder as well, but I like to do it from in here. You can see we've got the colors, it's the parameter, and then we've got the table. The table here, if it's one, so I want to do that as a product list default. And that's what I want published up. Once I've done that, click OK, do build and deploy. Again, it will deploy that item now. So back onto the demo web page. Under report part, I've now got my product list default being pushed through. As an end user, I want to now make use of that as a default. So on the insert menu, report part, I'm doing a search. I've now got my product list here. So I click and drag that onto the report. That's taken across the report as it was. So we can now run that, and the end user can now change it as they require. So it's brought through the parameter and the data set when I did the click and drag. It's not going to be a set item. So like a sub-report would be a set item that can change it. This can be changed. So it may be that we want to go through here, maybe 
removing that number so we get nothing through to start with. If I was to save that report, I'm going to save it into the tech week. This is going to be the end user report. So we'll save that. And then it's going to create a new one. Doing the trick. So on the web page, in tech week, I've now got my end user report. And that's the same as the other with no number in there. What a company might decide is that their standard changes from a blue top with white white writing, then now I'm going to add a yellow with black writing. Yep. And that's a nice style. Well, some people think so. We do a preview. That's now changed. Next time we do the report part. We've still got it ticked there going through. We can publish as a new report part if we want, but I'm just going to click OK, build and deploy. And that's sent through that the report part has been published. And that's the uh, definition there. So next time the end user goes into the same end user report, they will be notified at the top that an update has been made to the default. They can view the update. They can see an option there and notify me when there's an option coming through. If I click the box, click update, they'll now take a copy of the updated version down onto the system. So quite nicely we're going to do that. So we're looking at self-service, helping the users out to produce report that they need to see. So that's, uh, if you're looking at the three levels, we have the enterprise, the departmental, and the individual. This would tend to be one of the top two rather than individual report. Just looking at other items here, it is possible for us to insert the text boxes, lines, tables, rectangles, images, charts, Gauges, maps, data bar, sparkle, signs, indicators, as we had on the introduction slide. To show an example of some of these, we've got a sales report. So this is using the open and close with sales within the application, and it's using a data bar at the end to show the information. If you wanted a, a more in depth, type report. I've got a dashboard report built in exactly the same way, but this time it's a sub-report we're looking for at. So we've built each of the individual items and then put it together in a single report. They're reusable. So we can now preview it. There we go. So this is a report showing a dashboard with multiple parts on it. That can be shown out to mobiles, uh, more likely laptops and uh, tablets rather than individual smartphones. Using a smartphone, you can get a lot less on the page at the same time. So that's just looking at some of those. Now we'll move on to some uh, Excel. So I'm into Excel here. Just looking at some of the tools we could use in Excel. First, uh, looking at doing here is a Power Query. Now, Power Query is uh, a tool which allows you to import data from multiple different sources. As we've got here, we've got uh, web from file, and there's a few choices there from databases and from other sources. Some people might be interested in things like Facebook. They can analyze, analyze your Facebook, see uh, how many friends you've got, see how many messages they put through, those type of uh, information that you don't like anymore to get rid of them. What you might decide to do is I'm going to do a demonstration of the from web and from database and combine some data together on the fly. So the first thing I'm going to do is uh, I'm going to nip into a page here. Now this is just a, a a web page that we've gone to. This happens to be Southampton's uh, page there with the 
Premier League uh, information. All I'm looking at is grabbing the URL. So I'll now go to Excel again under the option for Power Query from Web. Put the URL in, click OK. It will now search that web page. And it will show me that there we go. We've got a table here. I hover over it. It's grabbed the table from that web page. If I do a right click and edit, I'll be able to see the content of that web page. There's only certain bits I want out of this. I'm not really interested in this null column. So let's uh, remove that one. I want to get rid of the home and the way. So everything from there to there. Let's remove that. Remove those columns. There's a couple of items at the end, don't need either, but remove those. And now we're going to promote the items from the first line up to the header. Going to remove, uh, rename the first column as position. Then we're going to have team name. And next, these are currently text, as it tells me at the top there. I want those to be treated as numbers, so there's other numbers there. Now that has led us through and created some steps. We can go back to how it was at any, any one of these steps if we want to go and change it and remove the step. We can also, in the view menu, under query, under advanced edit, editor, we can see the language has been produced, and that's the Power Query expression language, uh, sometimes called N. What we try to do there is get this information, and I'm going to, in the bottom corner, decide to show it as I'll put it into the data model, which is Power Pivot, rather than putting into the worksheet itself. On the home, click on the apply. That's now read the data into the data model for us. It's called table zero. Should have really renamed that, but we've got the information. I want to do some demonstrations on Power. Um, view later and one of those I want to do is the map. So those names for the teams don't actually map to our locations, um, all of them anyway. So what I want to do is bring some data from a SQL database I have. So using a SQL, so same SQL I did put a server name in, it gives me a viewer. I'm going to the geographic demo. I've got my primary lead team as a view. So I can edit that as well. So exactly the same tool to get the data out. The, the team ID doesn't really make, make much sense in this context, and nor does the um, region. So I'm going to remove those. At uh, which stage I'm going to do the same, put in the data model rather than the worksheet. Do an apply and close. And we've done an import through here. Anytime we want, we can do a right click and refresh. So on a daily basis, maybe when we're going through here, we'll refresh that data. But now going to Power Pivot, look at Manage. Those two items we brought through, the Table Zero and the Premier League teams with their uh, locations are now within that Power Pivot model. Using the diagram, I can now link the two items together. So the team names are the same on the two sheets. So we let those uh, go through. We can add the measures and like. I'm going to come back and do some more in here uh, a little later with some real data. Once I've got to that stage, I want to make sure I go back into the Excel. And at this stage, we can now insert a power view. Power View is more of the self-service reporting. It's based upon those two values we've gone through. Now, what I want to do is show the team names to start with. So that's a list of all the team names. I'm going to make that a slicer. I'm going to click on the slicer at the top, click away. Now we're going to choose a team name from there, the longitude and latitude, and add to that point. The big stage and asking it to do a map for me. 
The size is the point, the team names are the locations, and it's now drawn me a map depending upon that data. I don't need to do the zooming in, zooming out for myself. This is I've got the slicer here. I click Everton, it'll show me just where Everton is. If I now hold the control key down, click Liverpool, and I'll zoom into that area and just show me the values, the points from those two areas. So hovering over shows me 69 points for Everton and Liverpool. Now let's put uh, a couple of others in. So you've got Manchester, sounds like that, down three. I wanted to remove, and it goes back to where we were. So that's now the power view map going through. You can produce tables, matrices in here, and do filters and like. That's a very quick uh, overview of the power view. We go back to, I'm going to create a new um, document here. What I'm going to do is very quickly using power pivot, I'm going to do uh, a demonstration using the BI end to end. So I'm going to use the same SQL data table here, QASQL, the server, and it's the BI end to end EW. I'm going to use the view for dim date, back to internet sales, the customers, geography, products, and that's it. Do a finish. That's now loaded those rows into the power pivot. I could now turn my SQL Server off, and those pieces of data will be stored within the Power Pivot itself. So it's quite a small data set uh, coming through. Just uh, finishing off. So it's close. We can now view that data coming through. I'm going to make sure we've got a link in here. Now, the packed internet sales link to the data view using the SK date. So I'm going to link the order date into here. Okay. Next up, we're going to look at uh, the SK date. I'm going to make sure that that uh, works correctly. You can see that we've got the quarter here, and that will be sorted uh, using a text. So I was text sort rather than um, anything else. What I want to do on these, just a little uh, trick, there's an option called sort by column. I want to sort it by another column I've created called sort quarter. And do the same for the month. Okay, <laughs> run out of space. All right, let me start off. What I'm going to continue on is going to try and it. Let's Close down an application so we can continue on. Let's down the studio as well. Hopefully now we'll be able to do pivot table. Let's to create a two chart pivot table, horizontal, on the existing sheet. Going through. So, cool. That failed. Okay, what I was looking to do was create a Excel spreadsheet. Right, Excel, pay me out. What I'll do, I'll close that window and just uh, load one I created earlier. So, this is a power pivot that I produced earlier. Okay. Yeah, we've got a couple of questions as we were going through. Okay, Excel seems to be uh, playing up at the moment. But what I've done is I've produced an Excel spreadsheet. Now, if we go up to the Power BI,
yeah. So we're talking about power power view uh, at the moment. So just going to retry that uh, Excel spreadsheet going through. Okay. So this is the power pivot uh, I was looking at producing. This is a cut down version. So we've got the power pivot getting the data through, and we've got a couple of uh, pages of dashboard type information. We've got an overview, got an internet order quantity, and a retail order quantity. Within that, we've got the power pivot data, which is pushed through here. So this is what I was trying to do uh, a little earlier on the order date, hiding some information, showing some information. We've also got some measures here. So internet orders, distinct counts, and like that too. What we could do then is take that information and post it up to the power view. So this is the Office 365 SharePoint 2013 we're So we've signed up for Office 365. This, you can do this on the preview. There's a, a one month preview you can do. On here, we can do an add, upload file, and that will upload the file for you. Now, I've done that uh, previous. It'll take a minute or so. Now, this is using Internet Explorer. So you would expect Internet Explorer to work with Silverlight and the like. So there's the Internet Explorer. We've got the demo sheet. We'll also use the power view. So this will now start off Silverlight within the IE running on SharePoint of the Office 365. Now there's a, an opportunity for you here to uh, click twice. Um, it's not a bug, it's an opportunity. If you click France, it will then show you France that won't zoom in. It only waits until you click on another country and then it'll start to zoom. Which is a quite a nice application there. So we can now hover over it to see what the internet order sales is through there. So click UK or then migrate across, go UK, United States, here's the States. So there's no zooming at all, it will work on the application. Just to show you, um, this is Firefox. Same application going through. So it's using the web app. So these work. You'll find there's slight differences on things like width to column. You might have to uh, look at it in a few browsers to see what we've got. So that will work. All the slices work going through. Difference will come when you go to something like the power view. Now, power view within the Firefox will use Silverlight, so that will work. While I'm waiting for that one, I'll also do it through uh, Chrome. So I'll open up the same in Chrome and we'll also use Safari. Now, if we could show you this, uh, I'll show you that I've got the same open on my iPad and Safari on the iPad, so the same Safari on the app browser right now. So we're just looking at those different applications from the tool. So power view, power pivot, power query. Next up, we go back to the main page. Once you're on Office 365, there's an application option. And you could turn this on for any of your uh, data sets. So if you hover over the power pivot that you've loaded up to the Office 365, in the ellipses in the bottom corner, just waiting for the uh, web page to refresh. There we go. So these ellipses down the bottom corner, there's an option for enable or add to q and A. I've got remove because I've already added it previously. Now, when you've done that, up in the top corner, there's an option for search with Power BI Q&A. 
you may have seen some demos on the, um, on YouTube for this. And what we're just going to do is use the same data we've gone through on the power pivot. We're doing a demo of this. Okay. Seems to have gone slow. I'm just going to close the mic down. So this is in here. Just to make sure it goes in there again. What I'm looking for, it still uses Silverlight, so this isn't available in uh, other browsers or all browsers. I'm just going to type in show internet order quantity. And as that's one of my measures within the power pivot, it will then show me the value. If I then want to see it by subcategory, so we'll now ask, or even within the spelling, it found subcategory, and will then show me a bar chart. If I wanted to do that by month, I then decide that it would be better if it was a line chart for that. If I want to restrict it, I can give it, say, in bytes, and it recognizes bytes as a category name, so it only shows me the subcategories within that category. On the x-axis, I've got all of them. I only want to do that where it's in the calendar year 2013. So I'm not writing a query here. I'm just writing uh, an English query or an English question. If I take this back and do internet order quantity by region, it knows that region is a name for me. It will then give me the items going through, and I can hover over the internet order quantity in a map. If I wanted to change that and do by category as well, each of those becomes a pie chart. So if I now hover over it, I'll get each of the items going through. And that's pretty smart without any programming at all. Now to finish this off, if we go to here and decide to do internet order quantity, distinct internet product, this is what we've got there. And resell order quantity. You see now we've got the three values. I ask that by subcategory, it would show me a data chart where one of the measures has been used for the size and the other two, the distinct count and the order quantity, are used for the X and Y axis. But if I hover over it, it's giving me the three values. Again, if I take that one step further and do it by month, it will now give us What it is by the year. Not, I don't want to do it today. But it normally does. It doesn't recommend that. Um, there we go. Now, after they do it by quarter, it's recognized quarter as a value, it will now give me a play bar at the bottom. So I can now position my link and it will give me the take the chart at that particular time. Well, if we take it back to where we start from over here, I want to keep an eye on road bytes. So I'm going to select road bytes and then click the play. You can't see me, but I'm doing hand free here. I'm not Clicking anything, I'm just letting it go itself, and it's now a mixture of a scatter chart uh, and a line chart. We can take it back to whenever we like. So if something happened between there and there, do we release some new products, or do we take some products off the market? The number of distinct products we were selling has gone down. So that's the sort of overview demo of some of the tools we can use for the Microsoft 
mobile BI. Most, uh, some of it was producing the information through the individual. That could be promoted up to the departmental using SharePoint with a power pivot. If you want to take a step further, the power pivot can be put into the analysis services tabular model so other people can see it as well. Got a couple of extra slides now. Uh, as, we, as I mentioned, there are um, a few other companies coming through. The ones I've uh, used and tried out, uh, all very good products. Um, depends on what you actually need. We've got the Tableau Click with products like ClickView. We've got IBM and Cognos and MicroStrategy. Uh, they're all in the leaders area up, uh, up here. We've got a, a few links um, if you want to go and try it. Most of the product or most of the companies have free preview type uh, applications, so you can go and find for yourself. We've got the Microsoft Tableau, uh, Cognos, MicroStrategy, and Click um, going through. As we mentioned at the start, we've got each of these sessions has been recorded, and you'll be sent to link uh, with the recording. If you've got any questions uh, you'd like answering now, um, send them through. And then we've got a couple that we uh, have a look at in a bit. If not, if you can send it to techweek.qa.com, uh, make sure you've got my name, Marcus Gerald, and the session, which is the mobile BI. We can then uh, get back to you offline um, for any demonstrations. Okay. Uh, Okay, as, as we've got no questions uh, coming through, we'll uh, end this session. If you'd like to send emails through, uh, we'll get back to you on those. Uh, thank you for attending the session.